All right, guys, hold on. Can you hear that? I think it's a demon. <laughs> or was Welcome. it? Or was it Damon? <laughs> I think it was actually. Hey, a demon! Demon is over there. <laughs> <laughs> Things I do for this podcast. All right. So, <laughs> welcome to the Bunny Rabbit's Hole. Yes. Your yourself. own little corner of hell. Yes. So, all right. If you've never been here before, what we do each and every week is we pick one single theme and we talk about it. We rant about it. We rave about it until something inspires us to talk about something different. And then we talk about that for a little while. And then when we get bored with that, we talk about something else. And then after a while, we go, what the fuck were we talking about in the first place? And then we have it written down somewhere and somebody reads it and we go back to where we started. Right. And get ready for this because this is going to be really fast. And as Jason said, we look at both sides of it. We don't just research which fits our narrative. We flip flop, go back, whatever, da da da. And if you usually fend, fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just really sick of saying the disclaimer. <laughs> By now, you should know. Yes. But like, Unless you're a new listener. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Alex. But yeah. what we normally do is, lately anyway, is these are just opinion pieces, so there's really no other side. Well, this one there kind of is. There can be, yeah. There's their side and there's reality. Yes. <laughs> so, all right, go for it. What are we talking about today? Today we are talking about the equipment they use in the paranormal ghost hunt. You know, everybody's like, oh, we gotta have our, you know, digital thermometer and our EMP, your EMF, and then our th infrared thermometer. And, and, you know, I think all you really need is a set of ears, a set of eyes, a flashlight, a video camera, a GoPro strapped to your head. If you don't have a flashlight, you're fucking stupid. <laughs> right. So, right off the bat, I want to go through... Uh, B B and H Photo Supply Company has a top ten list of things that you should have minimum if you're going to go hunt. Okay. Oh, I, I, I found that site too. <laughs> you you, uh, you said most of them are out the bat. First is a, your primary light, then your secondary light. Why? Right. Because if you don't have a light, like Craig said, you're stupid. Well, and let's be realistic too, because um. Okay, I believe in ghosts. Jason, he believes in ghosts. Mm -hmm. You know, and ghosts are known to drain your fucking batteries. Right. Have a backup. Have backup flashlights or backup batteries. One or the other. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the other thing is, if you're doing a show about or documenting YouTube video or whatever about ghost hunting, you're probably gonna need a couple cup, couple cameras. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Your fixed yeah. surveillance cameras. And then a mobile surveillance camera, camcorder, right. if you will, right. phone, GoPro, whatever. Right. Uh, the next thing is, uh, the next three things are, you should probably have some sort of a FLIR camera that can detect. What's, camera, What's that? What's a FLIR camera? FLIR camera, is, it's the thermal cameras. So it detects heat. So you can see variations. Right. In a room. So now on that though, so I mean these thermal infrared cameras, and that's kind of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. it, detect, it detects heat, but like if I got out of my chair right now and came back in a minute and used a thermal red, one of those thermal infrared cameras on it, mm -hmm. it's going to show heat. It's residual heat from me sitting in the chair. Right. So you have to take that with kind of a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, I'll play devil's advocate on that one. Yeah, it's a forward-looking infrared camera. Is what it is. Right. You. I mean, because I've, I've I've seen them used in like um, Bigfoot hunters, and okay, unless that dude had a friend over there peeking behind a tree, that was a Bigfoot. Yeah. Because a residual shadow is not going to stay. Just like like I said with my chair. My chair is still giving me the shape of a chair. It's just going to have heat signature for me sitting at it for some mm -hmm. time. The other thing it does too is it shows cold. Yeah. So, and it just goes by color variant. So black is cold. Right. You know. So, and then, uh, you know, 
those type of cameras, sound recording equipment. We'll talk about different different devices for that they use for recording cameras. And a place to, uh, something to carry all the shit in. In a vehicle, so you can get the fuck out fast. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be realistic. And then the other one is the uh, EMF recorder. Okay, now, I want to get into the EMF recorder because everybody's watched Ghost Hunters, they've watched Ghost Adventures, they've watched, somebody, you watch at least some ghost hunting show. Mm -hmm. Ghost Hunters use the EMF recorder the correct way because when they started out, they're like, look, okay, everybody's getting all this strange feeling in this area. So they're going, and they're using the EMF, you know, what EMF detector does is it finds electromagnetic fields. Mm -hmm. And these electromagnetic fields can be caused by like electricity surges. So that's what they were using it to look for because right. those electricity surges can affect you in a way to make you like hallucinate or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or feel like you're being watched or feel like, the walls are closing in or whatever. Very true. Uh, you know, it can detect ball lightning. Yeah. <laughs> Which it would not be a cool thing to see. But you can't actually die. <laughs> okay, I don't even know why I brought up ball lightning, but I'm so going to talk about it for a second. There, There's this phenomenon called spontaneous human combustion. And for years, people just can't figure out why some humans actually will burn up, burn to ash, but nothing around them actually is singed. Right. And there's a theory that I saw the other day that it's actually ball lightning. Now, if you know what ball lightning is, it's a ball of fucking electricity that like bounces on the ground and it can pass through walls, but it has a tendency to try to find uh, you. <laughs> it comes after <laughs> the electromagnetic fields that you create yourself. Right. And it comes after you, and they're thinking, bull lightning is actually the cause of spontaneous human combustion. Huh. I learned something today. Ooh. Yay. <laughs> so, like, what I had played, you know, to get us started today is, because Jason and I both watched this video of somebody using this new app on their phone called the Necrophonic. That's what Somewhere. it was, Necrophonic. Look, sounds a lot like necrophilia to me. Product necrophonic. Sounds like so, an eight song. I got on the Google Play Store and I looked for it and I found it. But I wasn't willing to pay $9.99 for it. Oh, well, fuck that. So I downloaded the one called Raptor, which, you know, is like that. And I just hit the little button and it does the same type of shit, which like a spirit box does. And then it just plays for my speaker. <laughs> Gotcha. And it doesn't say anything. So you'll you'll see all these videos of people using spirit boxes. And what spirit boxes do is they jump basically they it's a radio transmitter that goes through like 30 channels in 1.2 seconds. Mm. And you know, you're never gonna find the same song or the same voice on each channel. So if you hear something said, they're said it's supposed to be something from the other side talking to you. Mm. I call bullshit. And because to me, all it says is. <laughs> well, come on, it has a fancy little screen that prints out the word that it said. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> right. I'm so now I don't want to be that person that, you know, I've watched a lot of debunking videos and they they jump on shit that other people believe namely me and then they start making fun of it like the bigfoot Loch Ness aliens you know they start bashing that type of shit yeah now the only the the thing with that with those uh theories and you know that those whole that whole genre is the fact that you can't there's it's always going to be debatable whether or not aliens live or not okay right. but with this you're actually just playing with a piece of technology that you don't, that can be manipulated, can be, who knows if the spirit box isn't something that's set up to actually fuck with the person that gets it. Right. And to validate what we said on this, you can actually go, there's a ghost hunter unit called the Paranormal, Paranormal Investigators of Milwaukee, otherwise known as PIM. Mm-hmm. 
they have a video that I watched a couple hours ago that are it, it shows useless equipment in for go for paranormal investigations and spirit box was on there okay <laughs> um you know you get so many people say you know with the rem pod or the k2 meter too mm -hmm. so um, really what it you would have a you'd have just as much luck turning on a radio and just dialing it to some random station that doesn't come in i've seen people actually do that i've seen some I mean, this guy, he has a channel called Demon Hunter or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I watched one of his, and I mean, he looks like a cracked up meth head, but, you know, that's, I guess I'm judging, I shouldn't. But he's sitting there with the transistor radio, and I'm like, oh, give it a rest, dude. <laughs> right, right. Like, if what you need is a, is a really good digital recorder that can pick up audio. Mm-hmm. That has a very strong mic, and yeah, you might pick up some voices. Right. But but like if Jason and I were going to investigate a house, and we heard something, we're not going to tell you what it said. We want you to figure it out for yourself. Hey, we've talked about this so much that hey, it said uh, you know I okay, they tell you what it says, and then that's all you hear. I go back to the every time I I see that on there, I think about when. Rob Helford was on the stand because they're being sued by the family of a, of, of a child who killed or shot himself in the face with a shotgun after supposedly hearing backwards messages in their songs. Now, right. Rob Helford's on the stand and he, he's under oath and he's, he's there and they, they go, okay, so you went through your own stained class album. And uh, he said, yes. Now he says, I did find some things that did kind of sound like it says something. Now, they're like, oh, do tell. So this first one, he plays it and he goes, see, it says, hey, ma, the chair is broken. Then he plays it again. And that's all you heard was, hey, ma, <laughs> the chair is broken. So that's <laughs> that's what I think of back then because he was mocking the abilities. You know, did they have the technical ability to layer a track backwards underneath everything? Possibly. Right. You know, we, yeah. you know, at that same time, we were building planes that – you know, were invisible to radar. You know, we're talking early 80s here, so we were building stealth technology. We had the ability to do that shit, but was it feasible? Was it cost-effective? Was And why the fuck would you do it? Right. Now, I do have... I'm going to share my screen for a second. Okay. Uh, as soon as you allow me to. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know I had, I had to do that. Yeah, the host always has to allow the others to share the screen. This is the new update with Zoom. Fuck oh. you, Zoom. Right. Here. All right, let me see if I can do it now. Nope, still can't do it. Yeah, because I can't figure out how to do it. Let <laughs> share screen. Um, oh, there we go. Multiple. Try it now. All right. Okay. Um, where is it? Hold on a second. I got to make sure it's still up. <laughs> uh there we go let, let me get this to the front and then i should be able to do it all right and before i play this i i gotta give i want to cite the source because i don't want to be taken away from anybody else's youtube channel or anything else mm -hmm. this is from dark arts tv that's their youtube channel and this is from the um the documentary they did on called demon house on alistair crowley mm -hmm. Okay, so this is an example of what the necrophonic can do. And if you watch the top where my mouse thing is, that's where it's going to tell you what, what it says. Okay. Did you see that? Yeah, where it said in the woods. Yeah, it was like up here it's telling you the words as they're coming out of that. So all of a sudden you're like, well, yeah. It says in the woods because you told me it said in the woods because you are, it's called suggestive hinting. <laughs> and so I watched that video also. And so when you watched a lot of the other like ghost adventures and, you know, all these other shows, they'll get two or three words a show. Yeah. It said baby. It said mama, you know, 
and they'll, they'll show the little screen. The amount of shit that was coming out of this device, it was answering their questions. It was, I mean, it was asking yeah. them questions. You yeah. know, it it was too much. Right. Everything that and, they suggested, it said something back. Right. And that Necrophonic, again, like I said, is an app for your smartphone. Which, if you have a smartphone, a smartphone can be hacked. Mm hmm You know, or they, it can be programmed. To, and, you know. <laughs> so, if you're basing your whole finding on a $10 app that you find on the Google Play Store, you might want to invest in something a little bit more. Right. Now, I did watch one episode um, where they used it on this island that was not, it was kind of like an old mill that was out in the sea mm -hmm. um, for something, but, and they had no cell signal there, but they're still able to use the necrophonic, so I'm calling bullshit on that. I mean, yeah, you can still, like, I mean, like if I don't have data, like if if I have no signal, I can't play the games on my phone mm. because it requires data to play them. Right. I'm assuming that app would be the exact same. And, and yeah, I'm sure there's features because they don't install the entire thing on your phone. A lot of those require to be connected to at least Wi-Fi for yeah. it to actually work. So, yeah. Yeah, and so, and not only that, like, if he can manipulate it with his phone, who's to say somebody else who's not on camera at the time can't manipulate it with their phone? That's that's where I was I was going to say that when you before you started that rant is who really says that it's his phone? Because the one thing that drove me nuts in that particular video you're talking about is he pulls out of his phone and it taps like this and then stops. Now. My phone is always on a screen. So you, I have to do, you know, I have to push a button on the side just to get to wake up. Yeah, I do too. Then I got to scroll up. Then I got to put in a password because my phone won't let me open it without a password. Yeah, I have the fingerprint or the pass passcode to get to this. And then half the time the app hasn't opened up. So I got to open the app again. And then, you know, he was just pulling out of his pocket and tapping it and it was stopping. Right. I have had old cell phones that I could do stuff like that with. Mm-hmm. But his cell phone didn't look that old. No, the video wasn't that old. Right. So, I mean, yeah, let me, I'm going to look to see when the video was released. Um, the video, they released it November 4th of 2020. So that tells you how, oh. <laughs> how old his cell phone is. So. Um, but um, obviously they had filmed it because there's a bunch of different sections and time frames in this documentary. Mm -hmm. so I mean, I'm gonna guess they probably filmed this over a year. Because yeah, just, there was the part where he's at the at you know goes to Alistair's house, and then he's at his house. Yeah, and then they go to Alistair's other house. Then they, yeah, then they go to the other house, and you know so this yeah I bet you it's probably over a year. Yeah, I mean I mean they could have done it in a couple months, but I mean that's that's a really Editing's not easy, but some people are good and quick. I mean, I I watch. I mean, there's people that live stream, and then when their live stream's done a couple hours later, it's uploaded to YouTube. So, mm -hmm. I mean, some people are really good at editing. I not so much. These things take like two hours to net to render and upload after right. we edit them, and we I do very minimal editing on these things. Right. So you know, take it. Take it. Take all all of the stuff you see on these ghost hunting. Mm -hmm. See, every time we talk about ghosts, this happens, where it just freezes like this. This is the third time we've talked about ghosts. This is the third time this has happened in one of these videos. So I'm going to pause it for a minute motion like the REM pods antenna it also has a temperature gauge and electromagnetic field detection. It, if a present appears around it, a sound will go off. This is good to use because usually a drop in temperature means something is trying to gather energy. Okay, I, well, that's the one that looks like the uh, 
It looks like a breathal breathalyzer. I don't know. I've never actually seen a breathalyzer. Uh, I've only seen it on cops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I mean, I don't. I I've never seen it used, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I. It's one of those techs that I haven't seen. I mean, I've watched a lot of these shows, so. I mean, for me, I would get one of those like, um, what is it? I I can I know I saw it here. There it is. Nope. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I would get one of these. I think they're called Olymp Olympus Digital Voice Recorder. Mm, yes. Those are the ones with the strong mic that can pick up sounds that you can't hear. Yes. Get one of those. So you want. That's the first thing you need. Well, that's the, like the third or fourth thing you need after flashlights, extra batteries, bunches of cameras, and then this. Yeah. And, and you want extra cameras because you want to set them up in, in different spots in the house. So that way you can go through and record and re, it. Because if, say, you're in a two story building and you're upstairs, but you hear a sound downstairs. You can later review that footage and find the time frame where you heard that sound. You know, you just kind of write down the time so you can look back at it. Right. And you can find Anybody it. who's watched a, uh, a cop show, an espionage show, knows that when you're tracking somebody across New York City, you have to hack into the CCC or the CCD cameras there. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, then you can follow them all the way around town. You know every turn they make. So if you set up your own little system like that within there, then you can have two, three, four, five different versions right. of what you're, you know, like uh, we were going back to that Aleister Crowley thing. Now, one thing that you and I have talked about, about these shows is every once in a while, there'll be something in there that you, you just can't explain, you know, you can't explain. I was telling you about the one little, video that I saw these guys are in the Utah desert in an old old house and they go into this hatch where it looks like a it's there's like a children's swing there. But the second time they go in there, there's a new ball that's on the floor that wasn't it's not brand new, it's all dusty. But the ball rolls and then they freak out and they run the hell out of there. But it couldn't figure out how the ball rolled because you're above looking down at it. It's a dusty floor that's undisturbed. And there's a guy right next to it, but there's nobody else around. And somehow the ball rolled. But in that video, the table thing. I'm glad you brought that up. Can I still share? Yeah. No. yeah. Oh, I have to do it. Yeah. I have to, uh, there we go. All right. Because it's actually queued up because it's right after, It's directly after that part that I showed you. <laughs> okay. So, so we'll, we'll watch this and then we'll, we'll talk about it in a second. Okay, hold on, I gotta get that page up. There we go. Because I start a Zoom thing, I get that Zoom screen. So, all right. So, share screen, Scary Demon House documentary, share. All right. Now, I want, I'm gonna go full screen with this. Go for it. So, go you can see it. better. All right. So, I want you guys to watch this board and watch the table. And they're gonna show up from a couple different angles. And, You'll see a girl walk by too. Now, you saw the board move. Mm -hmm. You saw the table jump. Yes. I mean, from that angle, it looked like this guy right here who walked around might have, could have used his leg. Right. But we'll keep watching because they're going to show up from a couple different angles. <laughs> fuck this, get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now watch, this is how he turns this off. Yeah, see, he just taps it. He doesn't swipe his phone, doesn't do anything. He just. Yep. Let's see if I can find where they replay it. Uh, hold on. They did show up from different angles. Yes, yeah, she has it from her phone angle. Yeah, I think it might be right around here. Yeah. Okay. 
and now I'm buffering. Let's go buffering. <laughs> Best of everything. Well, the one thing that it you, you you're right because the first the first angle makes it look like the guy could have done it with his leg. Right. I'm gonna mute this for a second while I try to find the other angles. Okay. That way we can talk over it. <clears throat> but in this other other version, you'll see when you show it, you can see the board move before the table does. Right. Right here. Yeah. Now watch this, because this is slow motion. Yeah, he moved right there. So that's why I thought at first, maybe he did it with his leg. I don't know where that sound's coming from. Be See? I'm going to back it up a little bit so we can see it again. <laughs> So watch, now fuck the book. We don't need to listen to it. Right here, because his hand was still on that when that thing, and it it went both ways, and it looked like he could have done knocked it back the other way, but he didn't. He was just mm -hmm. trying to get away from because it. Because he does step away from it. So it it's pretty, it's, I if they did it, I don't know how they did it. Right, I'm going to try to look for the other angles of it. I'll stop sharing while I do that. Okay, but the, so... In that video, what is interesting to me about it was obviously, you know, haven't figured out how they how the magician did their trick. Right. But um, when you the, the reason you need multiple angles is for this particular reason because you can't say without a shadow of a doubt from that video or that that thing there that the cable moved by the guy in the dreads. Right. But in the other one, you can tell. Yeah, and I'm having a hard time finding that other one. So, <clears throat> but the one thing about that video, though, is he does kind of set. I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. He does set up the fact that the table moved two other occasions before that, and I didn't see the table move at all. He's like, "Can you right. catch that?" Yeah, so, I, yeah, I, that was with you. On, I'm with you on that because, like, okay, this. That's where it happened first time. And so it was almost then, like it was trying to get it set up to where the stunt happened and it didn't happen. Okay, then we're going to keep going. The stunt didn't happen. Okay, we're going to keep going. Then it finally yeah, happened. I can't find the other angles. I'm not going to sit. I'll take me all night to go through that. <laughs> so, but I mean, because it shows it from the, the angle from behind the, mm -hmm. the guy without the dreads. Yeah. Because yeah, it's the girl that's filming it, and it sees sees that, and then you should see it from. Um, they showed it from a, like there's at least two different angles, but you could tell that nobody there moved it. Mm -hmm. This thing did. I mean, because you saw that board move. The guy's hand was just on the planchette, mm -hmm. and it was on there lightly. Because the board moved underneath the planchette, the planchette stayed. Yeah. Because he had enough weight on the planchette to keep it there, but not it, too much to keep the board there. It was almost pulling the tablecloth out from underneath the right. silverware. Right. Because one, but when the board start, started moving, he picked his hand up, and that planchette went with it. Yeah. So I can't debunk that. I would. I mean, but you're at fucking Alistair Crowley's house. Yeah. <laughs> with a Ouija <laughs> board scroll with six 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 on it. Yeah, and I mean, we've done our Aleister Crowley podcast. I mean, the dude was a freaky fucking bastard that was infatuated with shit and blood. Yeah, semen. menstrual blood. Yeah, and semen. And semen. Yeah, so guy was off his rocker and was trying and trying to open a gateway to hell and then didn't bother to close it. At this particular address mm -hmm. is where he tried to open the gate, the portal to hell. Yeah. I mean, Jimmy Page owned that house for a while, and he won't talk about it. Yeah. So I and, wouldn't go near it. <laughs> in, in that house was where uh, Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard told Crowley that they were going to do the Moonchild ceremony, which is basically you do the ceremony, you get a, a, what they refer to as a vessel, a woman pregnant under these these circumstances, and then 
the child will be the the body of the devil. Right. It's Rosemary's yeah, exactly. baby. Right. And Crowley told them they're both they're both stupid. Right. In you know, it's a ceremony that he wouldn't have tried. And right. they were saying they're going to do it, and he saw them out. But that all that conversation took place in this home as well. Right. Now they have like, if you watch this entire <laughs> video, now he does probably the stupidest thing you could do because they investigate that house. And yes, we'll get back to to equipment here in a bit. Mm -hmm. But they do that house, then they go on and do Crowley's other house, and after doing this house, it, it shows him at his home. And I mean, you see a door close on its own. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, you hear a bunch it's, of shit. It's basically uh, his life living the movie Paranormal uh, Activity. Right. You know, because so the go, cameras of him in bed and shit happening around him. And, yeah. And I mean, and you know, that wasn't enough. So let's go investigate Crowley's other house. Yeah. Then go back to our house and have to move out of our house because it's getting too fucking intense. Yeah, it's, and, and then he does the dumbest thing in the world. Dumber than doing both Crowley houses because whatever's there is going to fucking follow you. Mm -hmm. So then he goes back and investigates his, his previous home that he was in with all the shit happening by himself. Yes. Stupid, now, stupid, stupid. Now, you and I talked about this. And like he's just recording it with the camera. I mean, he does use the the, the necrophiliac device or whatever it's called. Right. But you know, necrobomicon. Yeah. So, but it's really weird because he goes into the kitchen and you hear what sounds like running upstairs. Mm -hmm. And then you hear this big slam, and he goes out to figure out what it was, and this like. Iron or some sort of like thin metal rod or not rod it was like a like almost like a one of the blinds like on a curtain or something mm -hmm. those long vertical ones yeah like, launched down the stairway and was now at the landing of the stairway you know I couldn't uh, for for certain say that at every given moment he was alone in that home right because could somebody have been upstairs pounding on the floor? Could somebody have thrown, you know, thrown the, the blind down the, down the stairs? It, it couldn't say that he was alone because, you know, the, the magic of cinema. But right. uh, if he was, and at the first notion of something going on, any decent or not even decent, any smart individual that actually investigates the shit knows the danger. Right. And being alone only makes you weak. Yeah. So, it makes you susceptible. I mean, I I do believe that people can get possessed. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of opening yourself up for that right there. Yeah. Not maybe the Reagan O'Neill level possession, but there's uh, you know, entities can take over and they can change your moods. Yep. They can change your thought patterns, your beliefs. You know, you're a little bit more susceptible to a suggestion. Right. You're a little bit more likely to join QAnon. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> you're, yeah, you lived in America for the last four years. Right. But, but what I'm saying is, there's risk that you can take, but there's no reward there. Right. And it's just utterly ridiculous that you would even try. Right. Do that alone. And right. the other thing, too, is you can't man, if you're going to do a full on investigation, like you need somebody to man the cameras. You need somebody to man the FLIR camera, the SLS, the, you know, the spirit box, the, Mm -hmm. you, need a team. On, you know you need you can't do it all yourself because what what are you going to do is like hey hey ghost are you here yeah see they're here yeah. you know it yeah who are you gonna, who logistically you gonna say, it's stupid to do right if you got nobody with you who are you going to say did you hear that too <laughs> right 
Or you can't say, did you hear daddy? Right. It said so, daddy. No, it didn't. So, like, it said Denny's. It was an ad for the Dagwood. And I think this is why I always go back saying I like Ghost Hunters, except for the fact that they play music through it. The new version of Ghost Hunters with Grant instead of Jason. Mm -hmm. Or is it J Jason's the bald one, right? I don't remember. All right. Well, Grant's one, I think Grant's the dark haired one that helped found it. He left for a while, then reformed it, taking a name. <laughs> what was that? Uh, apparently, my, uh, my hard drive is, my external hard drive is up to date. Oh, good. Who good. knew? Right. So, but he does his new one, which is on Hulu. They don't play any music yet. Okay. I liked it. But the one thing I liked about Ghost Hunters, getting back to that, is they wouldn't use a spirit box and shit like that. They would use just the recorder and then go through hours and hours and just listening and listening and listening. And then if they thought they'd heard something, they would mark that time and give it to somebody else and say, you listen, see if you can hear anything. And they didn't tell them what they heard. Right. You know, that person would listen and go, oh, I heard that, you know. Then, okay, now it's validated. Now you have two people listening to the same audio clip and coming up with the same sound. But they never, a lot of times they're like, because when they reveal it to the, the people whose house it is or whatever, they don't tell them what they think it says. Mm -hmm. They wait to, for them to tell them what they thought it said. Mm -hmm. And then they'll discuss it. That's how it should be. You should right. not ever tell people what it says. So you can, I mean, unless it's clear, like it says, like if you're doing it and all of a sudden you play it back and it says, get out, motherfucker. Okay, yeah, I heard that. I'm out. <laughs> Peace out. Peace yep. out. You're honest. I'm out. Just guessed. I'll leave. Um, I, don't know I, I don't know what I'm not wanted. I'm going to go outside and I'm going to yell back that you should probably go get talk to a priest. Right. I won't be chain smoking outside. <laughs> Um, so we're going to stop investing in your home. You need a priest, a shaman, a voodoo practitioner, and you're also going to need some kind of alien shit to come and get the whatever in here out. Maybe John Constantine, call him up too. Yeah. And then uh, just burn the fucking house down. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh shit, I got a spider infestation. I'm burning this fucker down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We had a big spider in our house couple months ago i mean this thing was i mean not tarantula but it was big and uh it fell down on the floor and i couldn't find it i'm like well gotta move yeah. it's, it's house now <laughs> it was one day uh i come upstairs and i stopped because i saw this wolf spider and the girl and because that top of the stairs is in my daughter's room mm -hmm. and the door they weren't here and their door was closed i now leave the door open because the dog likes to sleep on their beds <laughs> when they're not here or when they are here but I stop big ass wolf spider on the floor and I'm I go to get something to kill it and I come back and I'm getting ready and that fucker knew it and took off in the room I open the door I'm like kind of like yep I don't live in this room <laughs> <laughs> by the yeah. time they're back it'll have moved on <laughs> it's lifespan will run out or whatever right luckily they don't live that long right Wolf spiders freak me out. Oh, I don't like them. Uh, Anywho, no. yeah. um, what other equipment do you think you need besides camera, flashlights, battery, possibly an EMF detector, a thermometer, um, uh, the maybe the heat, the the infrared heat camera? Yeah. Um, I need the paranormal music box. Say it again, Sam. <laughs> so it's a paranormal activity detector. Music goes off on something that moves in front of it. So creepy music starts playing when detected activity and the light goes on. So it's it's a four hundred dollar fucking scam, is what it is. Yeah. So there is a channel called Art of Kicks. It's Art, A R T O F K I C K Z. Okay. And this guy, it's this, it's this black guy, and he's funny as hell. I love this dude. 
So he reviews, like, he does reaction videos to, you know, videos, you know, that you and I have talked about and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. that we've actually broke down. And he is hilarious. I can't remember where I was going with this. The stupid equipment. Expensive piece of shit. No, I lost track completely of what I was going to say about it because I went back to find it and now I'm just... Must not have been important. Well, <laughs> this one, uh, the Paranormal Music Box, it gets a 4.9 out of 5 stars. Hmm. There's no bad reviews. Hmm. So what I'm thinking that is, is uh, nobody's actually purchased it. These are fake reviews. But I think another addition that we need to have is the official Zach Baggins Ghost Hunting for Dummies book. I'm going to pass. I think it probably should have been Ghost Hunting with Dummies. Yeah. Oh, you know what I would also take? I would take motion detectors. Yeah. You know, no. and set them up strategically throughout the house um, so that if you and your group, you know your entire group is in one room and you hear the motion detector go off in the other room, mm -hmm. then there might be something. Oh, I know. He was watching these, this video because he, he he watches like like the, the spammed ham one that you sent me the link of. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of other ones. But oh, it's a, slapped hands. Yeah, slapped him, yeah. So he's watching this video of this infant in a crib. Mm -hmm. And I, they're telling us what the baby says. The mom's basically interpreted it afterwards, so they put, the, put it up. But it says, you hear it talking to something because, you know, kids can see shit. Mm-hmm. And then it's a, you see her get all like bunched up, like, you know, when a toddler's starting to get angry mm -hmm. and says, no monster. I've seen that video. Yeah. And then, sa then says, hi, Graham. Hi, Gamma. I'm Blake. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that video. That was cra That's crazy. Cause they, yeah, the, no monsters here. Yep. And, yeah, and then says, hi, Gamma. I'm Blake. Cause she's yeah. never met her grandma. Yeah, the grandma died before the before she was born. Yeah, and so, so like they're in the video, they're saying like, uh, yeah, the grandma protected her from the monsters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I you know I watch a lot of those videos, and they don't really you know a lot of them is like, all right, you know, you figured out how to move that little car in the background while the kid's playing on the right. piano. I get it. You right. It, it looks cool, yeah. but it's not that. But the little baby, you know, we're we're talking like just old enough to, to talk, maybe not even two. Right. And yeah, it's like no monsters. <laughs> it's, like, right. it, it's it's pitch black except for where the baby monitor is seeing and the, the, the kids standing up in the crib and do that. Right. But there there has been a few of those paranormal videos that you know just kind of make you question. Yep. But, well, it's like the one we watched where the that I sent you the video for, where you see this ghostly image of a woman open a door. This is from a security camera. Open mm -hmm. a door as a guy's getting ready to open the door and walk in. Yeah, I mean, he never. You could tell his hand was not on the door. Now the door opened on its own, and he's like, you can see him looking around, and there's nobody there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's fucking weird. There's no explanation to it. Yeah, I don't know how they because you can't. I mean. I guess he could have turned the knob and somebody had a string to it and pulled it, but the ghostly image on top of that, mm -hmm. it seems, that seems a bit over the top to try to fabricate something like that. There was another one. Um, this lady kept coming down into her, her kitchen every night or every morning and her pantry door is wide open. Right. So she'd make sure it's shut and then the next morning it's open again. So she set up a camera in her kitchen and at three o'clock in the morning, precisely, all of a sudden, doorknob turns, it opens up and stops, right? Like a perfect 90. And it's got a good clip. So it's not like it just slowly opened up. So the next night, she watches it again. Same thing, three o'clock, slowly opens up halfway and stops. It happened like four or five consecutive nights in a row. 
that this the, her pantry door was being opened by something in the middle of the night at the exact same time. I would have tried putting something in front of it and seeing what happened. Right. Yeah. Screw yeah, that. And, you know, let's let's see how strong this thing is. You know. Right. Yeah, because I actually just saved to my watch later. Um, he he was reviewing the Demon House of Lost Footage. Mm. I think it's a Zach Baggins one. So, but yeah, I mean, it's the, I mean, if I, it, I mean, it's a good thing that your brother and my brother and us didn't ever go ghost hunting together because you and I would have played so many fucking pranks because <laughs> my brother was so, so easily scared. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we went, my, my friend, um, our, one of our childhood friends went to see Candyman with my brother and his girlfriend at the time. And me and, you know, the friend sat behind them. And the first time he said, Candyman, 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 my friend went, reached out and grabbed Tone's shoulder. And he just, ah! <laughs> in the That's theater. Awesome. That's <laughs> but, awesome. You know, we would have done, we would have like recorded like sound like footsteps or something and just play it. And they're like, <laughs> we're like, I don't know. You heard it? Yeah, we heard it too. But that would have been us. One of us would disappear for a couple seconds and come running in. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, well, kind of like when we played, uh, but when chill. we were camping, we played chill out by the thing. We just yep. heard a, a tree branch or a stick cracking. And right. then and everybody's then, like, gone. Right. <laughs> like, okay, we going to take well, the chairs? <laughs> well, it wasn't us that was gone. It was our other cousin. Yeah. He just took off running. And we're like, it's a tree. It's a branch in the woods. It could be a fucking deer. It could be anything. We're in a campground. <laughs> right. So we kind of collected up the chairs and went back. <laughs> uh, I guess we're done. Yep. <laughs> but I mean, I get it though because we're playing a horror based role playing game. Yes. So it's already amping you up. And, you know, your brother always weaves an incredible story. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're not used to that sort of thing, I can, like, he wasn't with us when we were watching horror movies all the time. No. I no. mean, we basically had a pretty thick skin with that stuff. But, you know, in. We were watching movies that were inappropriate mm -hmm. for kids twice our age. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to, yeah, it's, to put it bluntly, that's, you know, I was, you know, seven, eight, nine when we started watching a lot of that stuff, you know, and kids that were my brother's age, at, you know, at the time, probably shouldn't have been watching it either. Right. Yeah, but I mean, it was, but it, you know, it was a different time, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like I said before, each generation has different setbacks and different advantages. Right, you know, we, we did a lot of shit that, you know, we probably wouldn't let our children do. Right. Well, and it's interesting because in our last podcast, we talked about how we were the last age of innocence. Mm-hmm. And I brought that up with one of my customers the other day. And he's like, yeah, he's like, and he, he was an immigrant, he's an African-American and he's a true African-American because he's from Africa. He has family immigrated here from Africa. Mm. And then he's like, you know, we used to go outside and play by ourselves all the time. And it was fine. And then that John Bonet Ramsey stuff happened and it was all over the news and our parents got freaked out and we couldn't do it anymore. He's like, I felt like I was in prison. Mm. I couldn't leave the house unless I was going to school and I had to come right home and be in the house. because my, my parents were worried I was going to get abducted. <laughs> but the weird thing about that was she was killed in her house. Right. But they're, <laughs> they're immigrants and they were new to the country. So uh, it, it was scary to them. Right. And I, I explained that's like where my friends and I, when I was lived in Louisiana, would ride our bikes it was right next to I-10 which is there was a lot of serial killers going through there in the early 80s. Yeah. But, yeah, so back to... Now, Ghost hunting. Yes. Equipment. Um, what about geophones? Tell me about them. 
Um, they're like vibration sensors. Okay. Yes, uh, I know what you're talking about now. Uh, yeah, they they can be set on the floor to detect phantom footsteps or other other moves so, will light up. Um, if you were to put it in a in an area where nobody's gonna go, I think you know they they would actually might actually work to detect something. But then again, how are they transmitting? Right. Uh, do you have to be there to watch the the device? Right. You know, can you set it up and then record? Probably set, yeah, probably set up and then set a camera on it. Mm -hmm. But the thing that gets me is like, a car could drive by and it's going to set that thing up. Right. You know, what? You know, some some cameras have a hum, mm -hmm. and what if that hum kind of vibrates the floor and it's it's that device is so sensitive it's like, oh my god, it's yeah. They're having like a party up there. It's still going. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I would pass on that one. Yeah, pass on the binary response devices. This PSB11 Ghost Box for 130 bucks. I think that's the one we saw the review on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, that's one of the sites. So let's see. Check out this stuff on the other site. Gear guide, 10 items bring on the ultimate ghost hunting road trip. Never one flashlight. Yeah. Pen and notebook. We didn't talk about that because, you know, you always write notes in the dark. Yeah. You know, when you're you're looking at all this crap. Right. You know, smartphone. I mean, who, does anybody go anywhere without a smartphone anymore? No. What the hell are ghost wipes? Uh, I don't know. Maybe they have to wipe their ass or something. I would not take two-way radios. I think they're a bad idea. So the thing with a the thing with a two-way radio is everything that you have, all the equipment that you have, is to detect is built to detect the transmission of a two-way radio. Right. So unless you have a way of, you know, uh, breaking those. I, if I need to talk to somebody else, I just fucking call them and say, hey, were you just in that room? Yeah. I'd call them on the fucking phone. <laughs> exactly. But then there's this thing. I don't know. A digital, oh, this is a digital audio recorder, but it's got, it's weird because at the top, it's got two little microphones that are kind of X like this. <laughs> it's called the Zoom, I think. I'm not, I'm not messing with you, Zoom. Don't fuck up on us again. <laughs> right. It's H4... H4N Pro Handy Recorder. So mm. basically, it's just a digital audio recorder. But I mean, you need a good one. And I don't understand. I'm not. I, they say you need to take headphones. I'm not going to take headphones because I'm going to listen to all this shit later. And, and you know, and that's that's the thing is the investigation. Uh, a crime isn't solved when the detective walks in the room. Right. A crime is solved when they're sitting at their desk putting together all the information that they processed while they're in the room. Right. Unless the guy, unless the perpetrator is still there with the knife in their hand, standing over the body going, hey, I did it. Right. It generally doesn't get solved at that moment. It's putting this stuff together. And in these type of investigations are the same way. You should go back to the lab. Right. And I recommend, instead of carrying a handheld flashlight, because you're going to need your hands for other stuff, get one of those, like, ones that the headband ones. Yeah. And wear one of those right next to your GoPro that's out on your head. You'll have a light lighting up for your GoPro, and you're never going to see any video from the GoPro because the light's going to tarnish everything. <laughs> and then you should have a microphone up there, too, to, to capture right. everything. Well, if you put the light here, you can strap the GoPro to your chest. That's true. Like, police camera. Right. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's, it's basically common sense. Mm-hmm. And like, and that's what most of our podcasts come down to is common sense. <laughs> <laughs> right. And okay. If you're spending thousands of dollars on a piece of equipment that just make noise or light up. Yeah. Maybe you ought to think about doing something different. 
Right, because if I'm spending thousands of dollars on a piece of equipment, it better not just light up and make noise, but I do my fucking laundry and cook me dinner. Uh, right, you know, <laughs> I, if if you're buying something that looks like something that they used in the first Ghostbusters, chances are it's not real. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's so basically, I think that kind of wraps it up. <laughs> yeah. and I think that uh, it wrapped itself up. <laughs> I don't think we really need to even go back and say what we said because no. you just listened to it. Yeah. So, who are you going to call? Insert phone call here. Peace out, love you guys.